So hello. Uh, welcome to my presentation about testing of Fedora and how we test uh, Fedora now. Uh, my name is Petr Schindler. I'm part of the uh, Fedora QA team in Red Hat in Brno. And I'd like to say a few words about tools we use and ways we test Fedora and make sure that Fedora is not broken most time. So, Fedora QA, that's the team which, uh, uh, whose goal is to make sure that, uh, that Fedora works at least somehow and <laughs> that it boots, doesn't break your computer and doesn't delete your data and so. Uh, if you want to know more information, there is a QA page on our wiki, Fedora wiki. Uh, as I said, our primary obje objective is to ensure uh, the quality of Fedora and uh, releases we produce. So, uh, what, what we do? Partly we, we are trying to autom automate as as much as we could. So we are developing some automation tools. We are using some tools from other distro. Uh, it's OpenQA. And we are working on some other support tools like blocker bug apps and some things that are not so important from people outside of the team. And of course, we do some manual testing of stuff. Uh, we do some testing of uh, the re release as a whole and uh, testing about uh, packages. Like uh, we are testing updates before they land to a user who don't, don't want to have untested stuff on their computer. And also the part of uh, our work is the communication with other testers and with uh, developers and the community in general. We are quite a small team for such a big task like uh, testing whole release. Uh, internally in Red Hat there work about, I don't know, eight people, two in the USA, one in Canada. He's very active. Dan Williamson, who knows him, he works for 10 people. There are four people in Czech Republic, one in China, and in India we have manager and few interns. But uh, there is also community which helps us really, uh, really tremendously. And I hope that when you are when you come to this presentation you want to help us too so you can join us too because we need a lot of help from community there is a lot of packages we need to test uh, or updates for those packages so every hand is helpful so our work uh, is from part some manual testing so we need some general Linux knowledge about almost everything in the system, the kernel or how the uh, GNOME works and uh, so to, to debug we have to know how to debug some, uh, some problems and so. And of also because we do some automation uh, tools uh, we have to know some coding, mostly in Python of course in bash and uh, the open qa tool is made in Perl, so yeah that's too uh, for communication you mainly we use irc channels uh, on freenode there is uh, fedora testing and also uh, mailing lists and we use conferences to talk to people in person. Uh, yeah, and the communication with community is the key 
to our work because without the community we would be a really small team and wouldn't couldn't do proper testing for the system. So what automation tools we, we use? Uh, the uh, like most of the work is focused on Taskotron. It's tool for uh, running auto automated task uh, task execution. Then we have OpenQA tool. It's not the tool we we wrote. It's tool from OpenSUSE. We just mm, run it on Fedora and it works really nice. And we don't have to maintain it because OpenSUSE do it. So that's a big help. And also there's something new. It's not from our team, but it's used for mm, test of newly built RPMs and it's called Koshe. Uh, I won't talk about it much, but you can look on uh, Fedora Wiki, there is nice uh, page about Koshe where you can read about what it does, how it does, and where you can see the results and what can you do with those and so. So, what is Taskotron? Taskotron is uh, automated task execution fr framework. It means that it listens to some message it on fed message. When it catches some message which is important to us or to some task, it will send. Uh, it will try to trigger a running test where build bot. Uh, will run the task which is mostly some test for example tests which are now running are rpm linked rpm grill update path F check it's mostly when some package is built we make sure that the package or rpm is correct and that it can be uh, it can be installed and it doesn't break your Compu computer or your system. Uh, those uh, you can also read about Taskotron on taskotron.fedoraproject.org. We have very nice new newly designed <laughs> page where you can look what it does, what uh, you can do. With it, there's some documentation links to uh, to the task which was run. So if you have some packages, you can look there uh, which test test was run there and look on the uh, results. Uh, there will be talk about uh, Taskotron or about how you can make your own tests in Taskotron or how you can run your own tests in tasks in uh, uh, Taskotron. It will be on fr Friday. Name is Taskotron Create Automated Automated Package Specific Tests. It will be uh, run by Camille Parel, which is also from our team. So if you want to know about Taskotron, how it works, how to create, how to run your own tests, just go to this one presentation. OpenQA, as I said, it's tool made by OpenSUSE. Uh, in past, we had to do all the testing manual. Uh, we had no automated tests. And if I show you uh, the matrices we had to fill and we had to test all those test cases, it's really long list. It's like those are all test cases. All, every line is some test case we had to run manually, and it took like two days of four people work. So yeah, it was really hard to test. And usually there was some release compose, and it had to be tested in one day because there was go no go, and we had to decide if it's okay to 
release it or not. So uh, that that wasn't a really pleasure time. <laughs> we had to work really a lot, and it's quite boring to run installation test like hundred times a day. So. Uh, Josef Skládenk and uh, Jan Sedlák came with the idea of uh, trying to run uh, something which could uh, automate those tests. And OpenSUSE, which I, I think they use Anaconda for installation too, uh, they had some tool which was used to test installation, so yeah, they tried to run it on Fedora. They said, okay, let's try it. This week we can we will work on running this on Fedora and if it will work we can use it. If not, let's find something else. And it works and it works quite well. If you look on those matrices, there are like results from Coconut. It's our project Coconut, which is our <laughs> open QA, and it. You, you can tell by the logo it's supposed to be a robot. Yeah, it's so, so like it's automated, automated, automated testing, and it tests a lot of tests, which would took us like a lot of time. You can see that that tests almost everything now uh, in the installation. So it helped a lot, uh, and now when there is some release, almost everything gets tested by uh, OpenQA. And we have to test uh, only some hardware-specific uh, things that, for example, uh, the DVDs or live live uh, images will boot uh, from USB or something which should be tested uh, on hardware and, and not in the virtual machine, because OpenQA of course uses virtual machine. I guess Quemo is used. So. And the great thing is that it's made by OpenSUSE, they maintain it, no, or maintain the code. We just uh, have our ins instance for Fedora. But if we have some bugs, we just fill some ticket and they will probably <laughs> uh, fix it. It uses OpenCV to match patterns on screen, so it takes a screenshot you have some predefined uh, screenshots or sc uh, some parts of the screenshot and you it search if it's on somewhere on the screenshot which it made during the installation if it finds it it can click and or use the keyboard and it use vnc for this and so you just define those steps like wait for this image to appear click somewhere and it will go through the installation, make the uh, screenshots and then it, it, it has a really nice, oh, not nice, but it has some front end and you can see those results. This is, the, those are results from one, one test of some build. Uh, you can see those green runs are which passed, those red ones are which failed. You can look what, on what failed, like you see those uh, screenshots and what it tried to find and where it failed so you can see what happens and yeah, it's really helpful. And writing tests for it isn't hard to. There are some more complicated things that are aren't easy to write and use, but uh, when you get to it, it's not so hard, and it still saves a lot of time. Uh, if you want to know more about OpenQA, there is a talk uh, made by. Jan Sedlak and Josef Skladenka. Uh, it's today at half past four and it's called post-level testing with OpenQA. So 
uh, go there and see how it works and how great it is. Okay, that was everything from automation and what we automate right now. Uh, we have also other responsibilities or we have to test things still manually. Uh, there are um, composites made now every day, but from time to time there are some more important composites which, for example, contain new anaconda or something. And for those are new matrices, uh, testing matrices created, and we have to test as much test cases as we could. Uh, also, we try to we have to try uh, have to test uh, during release. Uh, I will talk about it a bit later. Uh, and uh, another thing we have to we should test our updates testing. That's thing that we don't have <laughs> capacity to test all because there is a lot of updates in in system and. Uh, even, even we don't understand to every package or we don't know what it does we, we don't know the package so yeah that's the thing that uh, their uh, community helps a lot and it'd be great if the community would be <laughs> much greater um, so test matrices we use test matrices to for testing composes there are uh, more types we test installation that, that's the longest matrix you've seen. Uh, there is some base functionality of the system, like it boots, it looks nice, and it the logging is working, Selenus, Selenux is working and is on, uh, and services are working and so. And there is also uh, metric metrics for uh, desktop. Where we try to, uh, where we test, there are test cases for our desktops like GNOME and GDE. Those are my, our primary or uh, release blocking uh, desktop uh, environments. And there are also t test cases for other like Cinnamon and uh, XFC. Uh, but those are, are not uh, release blocking, but they are there. So if you use it, you can test it and uh, fill results so uh, for example a developer can see what works and what not uh, and there are another matrix is for a server because one of I'm not sure how the correct name product uh, no, really is there is workstation server and cloud so yeah we test server and cloud too and there are met me matrices for that too uh, uh, as I said, uh, we have those matrices only for some composes, those more important, uh, which contain some big changes. And also we test, uh, create the matrices for release composes, which are something which we would like uh, release as alpha, beta or uh, final release. Uh, when it comes to new release cycle uh, when the new Fedora is branched from, from Rawhide. Uh, for example now uh, the Fedora 25 is branched and uh, the testing of future Fedora 25 starts. Now we are in a pre-alpha phase that means that we have some we have some uh, criteria which should be met with uh, in alpha like it can be installed on uh, locally on one disk and that's all uh, if if there are no uh, uh, bugs which would broke those criteria we can release alpha and then we move to beta, fa beta phase where those criteria are most uh, strict and uh, at the end there is there are final criteria which are like most strict, like everything should work and installing to uh, disks on network like using iSCSI and something like that have to work and 
yeah, and the logo or background have to be right and there is like small things which should work and when everything is okay when we test everything and there's no bugs which are important enough to block the release uh, then we say go and if everything else is uh, okay too then the release is released uh, we test both on hardware but mostly on virtual machine uh, there are tests which can't be uh, or could be tested on vir in virtual machine but the results could be uh, different from those uh, when you run it on hardware as I said for example booting from CD uh, or USB is quite important because it happened in uh, past that we released uh, image with which when it was uh, placed on CD it didn't boot so we try to uh, make sure that it won't happen again uh, if there are some bugs which uh, break some or yeah, break some criteria then we call them blocker bugs there are meetings where we discuss if it if the particular bug is uh, blocker or not if there is some blocker the release can be released uh, or the compost can be or alpha can be released and we have to f f uh, wait for the fix and as I said OpenQA helps us a lot with this all uh, for now it works just for installation tests and base tests those like running services works and so but it helps a lot that's metrics uh, okay uh, during the, re the release of new Fedora we have uh, events called test days those are dead the days which are focused on testing of one feature if there is some new feature in Fedora for example <laughs> new GNOME or anything you can imagine and it has to be properly tested or developers want to test it pr more properly than we, would, we could do in our small numbers uh, then we can or then the test day event is set and the great thing about it is that it's focused on one day so everyone can uh, come test uh, test cases prepared just for this one feature uh, and there are developers on the IRC uh, and so when you have some problem you can communicate with them it helps debug those bugs uh, and with with developers or testers and uh, usually a lot of people come or not sometimes not a lot but more than it would be normally because it's usually more than four of us which who's normally tested more people will come on test day so the feature will get um, more coverage and also problems are really uh, really solved quicker because developer is focused just on this day on he can have those data those he can debug it like in the time and yeah, it helps a lot. Uh, one of those, uh, one of those, it's quite small. Yeah, this day was, for example, here work section graphical upgrade. Upgrade. You can see that a lot of people came and uh, tested. Uh, those those are names of testers, and there are problems which they found. So, yeah. For example, Camille when come to this uh, test day, he found a lot of bugs just because we were focused on just one thing. So it's really, uh, really good opportunity to uh, to developers to test their uh, test their new feature. 
and of course for example when there is some GNOME test day uh, you as a tester can come and see if there are new features you can try them before they will be released and I from time to time I uh, like uh, find something new which I didn't know that it works in GNOME for example I don't know recording of uh, workstation or something so yeah you can find there new new stuff you didn't know about so it's good to look if there is some test day which would be important to you for example very good test day is usually uh, power management because it's uh, mm, you can bring your own or test your own laptop and test how it works. If it doesn't work, you can talk to developers uh, what you can do to mm, make the battery life longer. So, yeah. Okay, blocker bugs. As I said, we have those cri criteria for uh, releases. It looks like of release criteria. For example, there is a list of things that should work, like requirements on rec in installator, which is Anaconda, that it must run. It has it has to use remote packages source, and it's just basic things like that. This layouts have to, it has to use. Uh, one one disk and that's all. We don't need anything else in Alpha. So yeah, there are those criteria. And we, if we find uh, some bug uh, which doesn't matter, them, then we discuss it on our really long <laughs> blocker bug meeting and say that it's blocker. Then it's put on the page. Yeah, that's the blocker box mm, app where you can propose some. If you find some blocker, uh, find some bug, and you think that it's blocker, that it's important to have uh, to to have this bug fixed, you can propose uh, this, this bug here. Everything you need is <laughs> be logged in with your fast account and. Okay, and then you just put there the bug ID, uh, which milestone it breaks, if alpha, beta, or final, and if it's blocker or freeze exception. Freeze exception is something what's not so important to block the release, but it uh, when the bug will be fixed, we consider it uh, important enough to put it put it to the compose even after the freeze happened freeze is something where it's moment after which uh, no updates are put on the uh, compose only updates which fix some blocker or freeze exception so freeze exception are for example bugs like some glitches in graphic or something that doesn't isn't important enough to block the release, but it's really annoying. For example, for example, yeah. And if you propose the bug, it will appear here as proposed bug. Then we discuss those on the, the blocker bug meeting and uh, decide if it's blocker or not. Of course, you can join the blocker bug meeting too, so you can say or uh, say what you mean by the what's your meaning about that bug. Uh, there is also a list about accepted blockers. Those are bugs which have to be uh, fixed before the, for example, now alpha release will be uh, will be released
Yes, and the good thing about it is that developers usually uh, see to it, uh, see the that it, their bug is blocker bug, and they know that they should fix it really uh, far, really quickly, because uh, we would wait on their fix. Uh, that's also why sometimes Fedora gets uh, some delays. <laughs> Not sometimes. Not always. sometimes. Almost always. <laughs> yeah, because when we when the release is, for example, delayed for eight weeks, it doesn't mean that uh, that we are out of uh, schedule. It does just mean that we want to have all those bugs fixed and wait for it. So usually we don't say, okay, let it be, it maybe breaks stuff and delete all uh, data from users and kill all those kittens, but yeah, we don't do that uh, usually, mostly. And just want to get those fixed properly boxed. Uh, sometimes it's not so optimistic because, for example, when you have feature where only one developer is uh, there and uh, he has to do something else or has a lot of work because he's alone for 20 important packages, then uh, we want to the bug to be fixed at least somehow. So from time to time it doesn't work correctly, but at least it won't break your stuff, like, like your uh, computer or uh, your data. And we wait for it, so yeah, if you will see some delay, that's probably because open, because Fedora QA said that <laughs> there are the problems. Uh, the most time-consuming stuff would be uh, software updates testing. Uh, up tes uh, those updates usually don't go directly to the uh, to the distribution to the release. It it gets to the updates testing repository firstly. Uh, there it should be tested. Uh, it gets some karma, which is uh, the way you say, yeah, I think that it works, you put it, put the karma to it, and when it has enough of karma, then it is pushed to the stable, and all users will get those uh, updates. So that's something how we ensure that uh, those updates won't break uh, mm, computer or system. But there is a lot of that's ideal case. Uh, that there is a lot of updates for a lot of packages, and that means that not every gets uh, tested properly. So there are some ways that, for example, if it's not critical update from some important package, then it, for example, can be pushed to the stable after five days of being in. Mm. updates testing so yeah we wait if someone tests it then it's great if not then okay we push it uh, anyway it would be nice if it would ha wouldn't happen so yeah more testers would be useful <laughs> uh, updates are only in stable releases and soon to be stable release for example now uh, F25 uh, will get some updates, I guess, uh, starts to get some updates, or no, updates testing, because after updates testing it goes uh, directly to uh, to stable. Excuse me, which the stable means the, uh, the software update testing will be pushed to the released version? There is updates testing, which is uh, repository usually not uh, not used. You can enable it, and there is update repository, which are updates to the 
starting point of the release. When the when the for example when the Fedora 25 will get released, it will be in stable because you have Fedora repository, and everything after the moment we release it is going to updates repository. Yes, so after the uh, GA. Yep. Yes. Yes. Um, only when during the phase of releasing or testing the new release, for example, F25, uh, those it, it goes from updates testing directly to the stable, which will be the release, like Fedora repository. But after GA, it will go to updates instead. So in Fedora uh, repository, the original is the state of uh, the system which was tested pro most properly and then you can uh, install updates which are in updates repository. And there is also Rawhide and it has no updates testing, it's like testing on your system directly. Uh, system for um, updates is body it looks like this where you can look what's new there uh, who tested most <laughs> most updates which updates are there the newest or everything and you can also find for example if you believe that something doesn't work for example, I don't know, Selenux. Okay, not Selenux. Firefox. Firefox. Then you can find uh, all updates. Uh, you can you can see the status. It means in which repository it is. Uh, for example, testing means that it's in updates testing repository and it's not in stable. And stable means usually updates, but uh, it could mean also in Fedora 25, which isn't here yet. But usually it's updates uh, repository. So you can look on the update. Uh, update, you can see the update ID. There should be a link. A link to Koji where you can see those packages and there are comments from testers and you can put their karma if you get think that it works you can put the karma plus one or you can say that it doesn't work which means minus one so uh, you can download those updates too if you find out that it breaks your system or it doesn't start after the update, you can put there uh, the negative karma and it won't be pushed to the stable. And the new update uh, have to be, has to be uh, created. Again, you need only a fuzzy count and then you can, you can test and provide karma. And you will get the badge for this. So, uh, if you want to have a new badge and you don't have it now, you can give karma to, to you, update. You can get multiple badges. It's like for one karma, one hundred karma, one thousand karma, something like yeah, that. Yeah. So, so, if you provide it scales up. karma, you will get badges. Yeah. Every, everyone wants badges, so yeah, it's great. <laughs> there are also some test cases uh, in some. Not in every package, but some have some test cases, so uh, you can find find out how to test it, or how developers want it to test it. But, um, so you can look there. Okay. Plans for future. As I said, OpenQA now tests only installation, so we would like to test desktop too. So. One way to do it is to use Behave and Docktail, which is uh, behave-driven uh, testing, and it's something what desktop QE in uh, Red Hat does. So yeah, that's one way. 
Another way would be open Q to use open QA, but there, there would be a lot, lot of problems with changing of fonts and everything because it's really a problem to, for open QA when small things changes, it makes the uh, image recognition hard. And yeah, that's it. We would like to have a Beaker instance in Fedora in future. So people who have s uh, some tests on Beaker would be able to run those in Fedora too. And also better coverage of tests in automation. And there is a lot of work on task terms still yet. So <laughs> yeah, there is a lot of things. So how you can help us? You can join us if you visit the wiki page QA uh, slash join then uh, you will find out what you can do and how to join us uh, you can communicate with us on the irc channel it's fedora qa not testing as i said uh, you can submit to test mailing list add the qa calendar it's if you know fedocal then we have we have hold on we have the, our, our calendar too. Now there are only meetings and test days. So if you want to know about test days, just at Fedo our QA Fedora calendar, uh, their calendar. Or you can join on test days. You can find those on the calendar. Uh, of course, use Abert when something breaks. Usually you will see pop-up message that it it failed, so try to at least report it by Abert or click to report the problem. Uh, you can also report it to Bugzilla uh, with it, or you can directly use the Bugzilla. And of course, if you have some packages which you use, and you would be, you would like to, for them to be uh, functional then you can provide karma. It would be great to have more testers here. Also, you can try Rawhide. <laughs> uh, that's really a good place to find some bugs. Uh, and it's really good for those who like new technologies. And if you want to know how future Fedora will look like, uh, that's the place where you can look for it. And there are some links. I there, think there is actually a talk uh, on Rawhide in two hours or three, living on the edge. So you can have a look. Okay. So that's all for me. From me. Uh, if you have some questions, how is the time? Um, I'm from the localization, the localization teams, and currently having the uh, localization QA in a manual way is. Any possibility that can have uh, automated localization QA? Localization in open QA. Um, what exactly do you mean by localization QA? Right. Uh, at this stage, that the manual QA test is uh, focusing on to pick up the any incomplete <coughs> translation strings as mm -hmm. well as any bad translation in terms of the quality. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to more take time only a quality wise, but not the quantity wise like yeah. incomplete because mm. incomplete translation probably can be picked up by the uh, automated QA if possible. Okay. Well isn't the like translation coverage can be seen in the translation system, right? Yeah. So you can like have an overall picture of whether Yeah, but but uh, but for example there are test days for localization and they are trying to find bugs where oh, something is not set in the yeah, it is properly. In the translation system, but it doesn't show, right? For example, the, or the translation is, is wrong. Or two ways, the string simply not localized because there is oh, there's no translation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. And the other way is I think that there is incomplete translation, uh, but it is not mapped as a to be translated mm. strings by the developer side. So we cannot provide translation. So mm -hmm. in either way that we have to follow back 
to be fixed by the translator or fixed by the people place? I have to say, I, I'm not really sure how we could automate that. I can imagine it, but it would be a really long way and really hard work because you would have to take some picture, for example, and uh, find text and uh, see if it's well, in the correct language and so. But it, with, with, yeah, with, with our current tools, it wouldn't be possible, probably. We do have a list of packages we are looking at, mm -hmm. and then I'm not QA, so can't tell exactly how, but it, should, it can be done the one command against to the build. Really? Yeah. So that so then it could, can be run in task okay. or probably. If, if you have already have some tool which is able to detect some of these errors, you mm -hmm. can run the tool. For example, if it is like, if we can run it on a new Koji build, if you can run the tool on the RPMs or maybe yeah, it shows this is the same thing. You can also have a hundred percent translated Japanese, uh, say, hammer strings translated to budgets, three hundred. Oh, I see. Yeah, we can discuss in detail. So, another questions? Yeah, If you want to know something about the open QA, yeah. there, there will be talk, and yeah, they would, would probably know more than uh, we do. I, I'll tell you when. Uh, half past four. Yeah. It's here in this room. Okay, so, so, yeah, yeah. They, they are the right person to ask. Okay, so yeah, half past four. Open but QA I think that it's possible. Because we do not directly work on open QA, but we have other guys who do, mm -hmm. so you can ask them directly. And, uh, but in Fedora QA, we do not really have any experience with uh, non-primary architectures, secondary architectures. Uh, we just focus no. on primary ones. Yeah. So I don't really know what's the state of uh, open QA or PC or, yeah. um, Integration tests such as you described are often flaky. Do you have any issues with that or do they turn out to be pretty stable? Sorry? Um, like, do you think there's flakiness issues with these open QA tests? Yeah, there's a lot. We like look on those. We, we don't uh, send uh, failed uh, results because we have to look at them if it's something, some problem with uh, yeah. QR. Like, the, the certain level of those tests uh, is yeah. not high enough that we do not submit automatically failures. We only yeah. submit passes. And if there is a failure, we have to manually look whether it is a real failure or whether something, you know, the network broke, the uh, virtual machine 